In this episode, we are going to be installing our chains. Stay tuned! So our new sprocket did come in the mail in time. Came with a nice little key. And then also, uh, this is the, I think it was a type B. So that means that it's offset to one side uh, for the keyway. So it should grab a little bit more and it'll work better for our center mounted bearing setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our jack shaft on here. I have some damage on the jack shaft from an old project. So this side's gonna be cut off, but just means I'm gonna have to install these kind of like a shish kebab here. All right, so we got that lined up. We'll worry about the keyways later. We got those keys. So first, what we're gonna do is go ahead and install our chain from the electric motor to the jack shaft here. So I got this roller chain from an old project. You can get these at uh, any fleet or industrial supply store. So this is what I have left of the new chain, which is not enough. I have some old chain left over from a go-kart. Looks like this should be long enough. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just line them up here. And then this is an inside link and that's an outside link. So what I'm gonna do is mark this outside link. I'll just fold it and keep an eye on it like that. And then I'm gonna use the chain breaker and punch that pin through. And I wanna keep the pin in part way like that so I can push it back from the other side. Uh, this is how you do it with uh, no master link. So after looking closer at this greasy old chain, I did notice that there is actually a master link. So we won't have to worry about uh, keeping that pin in the link. I can just push it all the way through. But I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the master link here. And now that I have that, all I need is two inside links to line up and then this will be my outside link. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, re-measure this and then go ahead and break this chain. Okay, so I have my chain breaker in the vise, so hopefully this will show up on camera better. Uh, but basically, I'm just gonna tighten this and it works like a C-clamp, and then it's gonna go ahead and push that pin through to the other side. Okay, that should be long enough, so I'll go ahead and back it off here. Yep, so the pin made it all the way through. Now the trick is just gonna be getting it off of the chain breaker. Maybe I'll try to use this as a spacer and then use the threads to pull it through. Uh, it's not the right way to do it. I really need to get a number 35 chain breaker. All right, problem solved. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line this up here. Then we'll get our master link in. and then this little guy should just pop right in the groove. Okay, so we got the front part of our chain done, our front chain on our jack shaft done. Now we'll flip the bike around and go ahead and do the other side. 
Okay, so now I have this chain, which ugh, pretty nasty. This has been on the bench in my pile of parts for a long time. And I'm pretty sure this one has no master link. But basically, we're just going to line this up onto the rear axle. That pin snapped out, so we can go ahead and back this out. We're just going to wiggle those until they line up and hook in together. Okay, there we go. From here to here is too wide for the chain breaker. I'm going to try to push the pin in partway with the pliers, and then after that, I'll switch over to the chain breaker for the tough stuff. Oh, I got lucky on that one. All right, and then we'll check, make sure it's sticking out of the other side. And it is. So we now have a functional chain. So it looks like we are going out to the shop for the rest of the project. I have uh, got you guys in an angle here so you can see what's going on um, with the rear chain at least. So we have a couple of major design hurdles here. So first of all, the big issue here is the chain alignment from uh, front to back here. It is not the same. Um, I can't flip this sprocket because then the chain will rub on the mounting plate for the jack shaft. And then this one is already as far out as it can go. If I flip it the other way, it goes closer towards the center. So, to fix the issue up top, I need to push this down so I get lower on the rear fork here, which, as you can see, it wise out the further back you go. So that's going to help with that issue. It's not going to solve it. Now, I may need to flip this pillow block bearing, which will allow me to move this sprocket in another maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch and then the bottom chain that is pushed over just as far if not further. I flipped around that pillow bearing um, and that actually did give me enough uh, clearance so it's not rubbing on this plate and it did move this chain over far enough where I could get by with a tensioner on the bottom. Now obviously I'm going to shorten that chain before I'd run it. But, um, as you can see, it now will roll, which is good. It's still rubbing on this top part of the frame just a tad, but that's not a huge deal. As long as I'm moving forward, I don't think it'll be an issue. It looks like it's not going to throw chains. So, huge bullet dodged there. Oh yeah, and also I did lower the jack shaft as far as I could. I ended up lowering it maybe an inch. Uh, and that's as close as I can go before it would hit the, the sprocket for the pedals. And that also helped me get a better angle for the rear. So, crisis averted there. But I'll get you another angle of this right here. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see here how close uh, this is, but it still needs to move over um, about a half an inch. Um, and that became even more uh, obvious when I lowered the jack shaft. So that's going to be our next video is remounting the electric motor uh, with sideways adjustability. All right, guys, thanks for watching today. Um, obviously, not everything went according to plan. Uh, that happens a lot when you're doing stuff from scratch without a kit. Uh, but thankfully, we were able to get it straightened out with some relatively minor changes. Um, and I'm glad it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. We didn't have to cut anything. We didn't have to weld anything. So that's good. Um, and it really shows how good um, muffler clamps and, like, 
just those bolt-on tensioners can be because you have that infinite adjustability um, that you wouldn't have if you were to solidly weld a plate to the frame. So I'm glad we got that straightened out. Um, next week we're going to focus on getting the front chain alignment straightened out um, and then hopefully after that we can do some just test runs with a little battery or something, make sure it's not throwing any chains uh, before we get too far into the electronics. But as always, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you guys next week.